Um, and I'm going to share my screen. So uh, good morning, everyone. My name is Erin Kokinda. I am the new Community and Economic Development Director for the Town of Wakefield. I started about four weeks ago at this point, so uh, I appreciate you all joining me today. I thought as we look forward on 2021, after talking to Lisa Gonzalez-Welch uh, at the SBA, it would be nice to kind of put together a quick kind of well, quick, but a, a kind of resource uh, webinar for our small business community or business community in general as we look forward in 2021. I know that 2020 has been difficult uh, for many businesses and 2021, it's still, uh, there's a lot of unknowns. So I thought the more resources that we can kind of put in front of you and connections, uh, it will help you as you kind of look forward in the new year. So um, real quick, this is the, the agenda. Um, here I am right now, um, kind of just giving introductions to who we have here. Um, so we are joined by two of our state reps. Thank you very much for joining us. Uh, we'll hear from state rep Donna Wong, who represents the 9th Essex, um, 9th, 9th Essex. And then we're uh, joined by state rep Kate Lipper Garbedian, who represents 32nd Middlesex. We're also joined today by um, John Smolinski from the Wakefield Info Chamber of Commerce, uh, Lisa Gonzalez Welch from the SBA, uh, the Northeast Region, uh, Nancy Girardi from the Mass Small Business Development Center um, up in Salem State, uh, Maria DeStefano and Keiko or Orell, I'm sorry, Keiko, if I mispronounced uh, that, from the, uh, Maria is from the Massachusetts Office of Business Development and uh, Keiko is from the Mass Office of Travel and Tourism and she'll be talking about the Mass Local Campaign. Um, we're joined by uh, Bill McLeod from uh, SCORE here, and then Beth Ann DeHan from the Center of Women, Women and Enterprises. So you can see we have uh, kind of a full agenda here. Um, just a few things, and I think a lot of you have done this already. I'm going to ask that you turn your cameras off and muted during the presentation to avoid distractions. Uh, I will ask you if you could turn your cameras, cameras back on during the Q&A. Um, you know, I just think that would be helpful. You to ask a question during Q and A. Feel free to send me a direct message in the chat box, or you can um, raise your hand and I can call on you. As I mentioned, this is being recorded, uh, so we can share it with you after, as well as share with other people that were unfortunate, uh, unfortunately couldn't make it. Um, and then most importantly, I'm, I'm here to, you know, serve the town of Wakefield and I'm here to help any way possible as we kind of, um, as we move forward here. So I am going to stop sharing my screen um, and I am going to hand it over to Rep Wong to uh, say a few words. Thank you very much for inviting us all to get together. And um, I think this is a good thing. Hopefully we can do it more often. And um, what I wanna say is um, Kate and I at the state house will do whatever we can and work together to um, help the businesses in uh, Wakefield and the economy. Um, I would like to give you my email because I think that's the best way to contact us because um, the state house doesn't want us um, at the state house that often only when necessary, so we won't be able to get our, our phone calls. So do you mind if I give my email address? Sure, please go ahead. Okay, it's my name, Donald.Wong at mahouse.gov. Okay. And I just put that in the chat box as well, so people can access it there. Oh, thank you. Um, also, I've worked with quite a few people that you have invited. Um, um, so it's, it's great to see some new faces and some old faces. Um, this pandemic has hurt us a lot. Um, but again, um, myself and Kate is here for Wakefield and whatever we can do for you. Um, you have a great chamber. Um, I usually call him Jay instead of John, and he's been doing great with um, Wakefield. Um, I hope that we can see everyone uh, Saturday, the Saturday morning for the sidewalk sale, if it's shoveled. Um, 
other than that, um, I'll wait for questions and uh, happy to be here. Well, thank you so much for being here. We really appreciate it. I'm going to hand it off um, to Rep. Uh, Lipper Garbedian uh, to say a few words as well. Thank you for both joining us. Absolutely. And thank you for having us. Um, good morning, everyone. I hope that you are well. Um, this has been a very challenging year, I know, for us personally and professionally, but I'm glad that we're able to be together today to share ideas and resources um, because we're going to get through this together. Um, I want to credit Aaron and the town of Wakefield for putting this together and for the town also just to identify a role for you, Erin. I think it's so critical right now to have somebody at town hall thinking about partnerships with the business community. Not every municipality has the resources um, or the foresight to put in place an economic director like uh, this, the economic development director. So really um, excited to have you there and work with you. Um, state local partnerships are so important uh, and great also for all the collaborative work you're already leading on with um, John at the chamber. Um, I'm Kate Lipper Garabedian. I am a relatively new representative and have been so lucky and fortunate to get to work with Rep Wong uh, to represent Wakefield. My district also includes all of the city of Melrose and a small slice of Malden. Um, so one thing I've appreciated being able to do is put the different chambers and uh, city hall and town halls in touch with each other at times about different initiatives that are happening. I know it really helps um, when we can talk to each other. Um, since taking office in March, my, uh, my, my office has put together a number of resources that you can find on my website. And one that we identified very early on was the need for a resource for small business owners. Um, and I can put a link in the chat where you can find that. It's been updated periodically, I think at least four times since March. Um, and of course, some of the information becomes dated, as you know, because there are grant programs that open up and then are closed. Most recently, um, the state and the Baker administration put out a state partnerships for recovery initiative, which was a grant program. Um, and so perhaps we'll hear from some of you about whether you've applied and how that process is going. As you know, also, Rep Wong and I supported uh, several different bills this year that have been enacted to support businesses one related to taxes uh, and when they are come due. So we've delayed that for many businesses um, to enable um, you uh, to retain some of that revenue uh, during this difficult time. Another for the restaurant industry was a loosening of regulations uh, enabling local, munis local municipalities uh, to more quickly approve for outside dining. Um, and I know that we've all been able to enjoy that over the last several months, although certainly not today, I would say. Um, and also the sale of beverages, alcoholic beverages for off-premise consumption, so um, to go um, when, or for delivery. So those are a couple of things that we've been mindful of, but I'm always, uh, you know, open door policy. Please email me anytime if you have questions or ideas for things that I can share with my colleagues at the State House that we might want to consider for further policy making. Um, so thank you so much for having me. I'm very excited to be here and, and learn more from the other presenters. Thank you so much for joining us. We really appreciate it. It's nice to virtually meet you <laughs> and we'll, we'll continue to work together. So thank you. Absolutely. I just noticed that our town councilor, Paul Dinaco, um, just joined us. And Paul, I don't know if you wanted to say a few words before we get the presentation kicked off. Um, I know I just asked you to start your video. Um, if, if you're interested, um, we can have you. Oh, there you are. <laughs> Good morning, Paul. How are you? Good morning, Aaron. Thank you very much for doing this. And uh, welcome, everyone. Uh, to this uh, webinar. Um, I think we're going to be able to achieve some uh, great ideas out of this. Aaron's uh, hitting the ground running and you're doing a great job at it. Um, I'm interested in hearing what everyone else has to say. So I'm just going to make it real short. Welcome to Wakefield, uh, to my representatives, good morning. To all the other representatives from Massachusetts, also good morning. So I'm going to turn it right back over to Erin uh, and let her continue with this uh, presentation uh, and not take up everyone's time. Thank okay. you very much. Thank you, Paul. Well, great. So, um, you know, I'm going to introduce our co-host as well um, to this um, meeting. We have, um, uh, I'm sorry, John Smolinski from the town of, uh, town, <laughs> I'm sorry, the Wakefield Linfield Chamber of Commerce here. And I know he was going to say a few words as well. So, uh, John. The floor is yours. 
Thank you, Erin. Uh, again, welcome to all of you. I was really pleased when Erin shared the uh, participation list with me yesterday to see so many of our chamber members participating in this as well as others. So thank you for supporting this and thank you to Erin for bringing this together because it's important for us all to be able to work as much as possible for the benefit of our local businesses. One thing I wanna highlight for all of you today is that these representatives from the various organizations that are gonna to speak to you this morning, uh, these are just not COVID related organizations. They were pre-COVID, they're here with us during COVID and they'll be here with us after COVID. These organizations and the resources they bring to bear and what they're able to offer you with their expertise and their knowledge is available year round, not just because of the COVID. It's, it's more important right now because we need to know what's out there, but just to highlight for you, uh, we've worked constantly through this with the SBA. You've seen us offer many SBA seminars and informational sessions throughout this COVID and beforehand. Uh, Maria has been coming to town for a couple of years. Many of you have sat with Maria, just FNO, on personal one-on-one -on -one counseling for your business. Uh, Nancy has been out with her from the Enterprise Center. She's also been here and come to town. Uh, Bill with SCORE, we just recently did a seminar with SCORE uh, on crowdfunding. So what I want to highlight for you is that these individuals are resources that, are, that have been here in Wakefield, that have participated with our chamber, supported our chamber and supported our businesses. And so please take names, take numbers, um, pay attention to what they have to say, but also remember they're not going away. They've been available to us and they will continue to be available to us as they've helped us for the past year and a half or two years right here in Wakefield in chamber sessions that we've hosted. Uh, as I like to repeat, uh, Maria has said to us many times as she's spoken to us, she might not have the answer, but she knows a guy who knows a guy who knows a guy, and she'll get you an answer. So please, thank you for participating. Pay attention to what these individuals have to say. Thank you again to Aaron for pulling this together. Kate and Donald, thank you very much. They've been great representatives. Kate reached out to me when she was first running to talk to the chamber about business issues. She's been very, very easy to talk with and work with. Donald and I have been friends for over 30 years. He's a true gentleman. He's one of the finest individuals I know, and he's also been very easy to work with. So we're very fortunate where we are within our community to have an Aaron, to have state representatives that we have, and to have these other individuals available to us. So please take care, stay safe, listen to what they have to say, and enjoy the seminar. Thank you, Aaron. Thank you, John. So I'm not gonna, I'm just gonna kind of do introductions in between because we have a lot of speakers. So this event, like I mentioned, came to be um, after having a discussion with Lisa Gonzalez Welch, who I've known for many years, probably 11 or so years uh, since my days working in the city of Lowell. So, you know, she thought this would be a great um, starting point, especially like I was saying, as we look forward in 2021. So uh, I know the SBA has been at the forefront since uh, COVID has hit. Um, so Lisa, I'm going to ask you to share, uh, turn your video on and I'm gonna share my screen for your presentation and, um, yeah, I'll hand it over to you. Great, thank you, Erin. Good morning, everyone. And I wanna thank Erin, as, as Erin stated, she and I had a conversation not too long ago, just kind of brainstorming what we could do to help um, many of you who we're all, it hasn't been an easy year. So we just wanted to team up and bring in our community, our state, our federal resource um, friends uh, that can showcase how we can be of assistance to you. So we hope that this is helpful. And Erin, thank you for agreeing to do this. So um, as Erin stated, there is a chat box at the bottom that you're welcome to post your questions and we will try to address as many of those as we can. And if we're not able to get to those by the conclusion of our program, we'll certainly follow up with an answer. Um, so my name is Lisa Gonzalez Welch. I am an economic development specialist with the US Small Business Administration, Massachusetts District Office. Um, here, I am one of a team of 14. And what I do is I put a face on our agency. So I'm very lucky to work with uh, community organizations, local state government, uh, colleges, just about anybody to see how we can team up and be of help to you. Thank you, Erin. So um, let me tell you, for those of you who don't know the SBA, we're a federal agency and we can start the, um, we were created by Congress back in 19, 
53 with the mission to help start and grow businesses. So our office here in Massachusetts is located at the Tip O'Neill building um, and we have a branch office in Springfield. In order to keep everyone safe right now, everyone's working remotely, but you can certainly reach us via phone, email, um, Teams, Zoom, whatever works for you. So please, um, if we can be of help, don't hesitate to contact us. Next slide, please. So our goals um, for, uh, for our agency are to support small business revenue and job growth, to build a healthy entrepreneurial ecosystem and to restore small business and communities after a disaster. And we're gonna talk a little bit more in depth about how we do this. Next slide, please. So how can we at the SBA be of help? Well, we do that by providing free business counseling through our resource partners, which you'll hear from a little in a little bit on how they can meet with you face-to-face -face and help you in every step as you get ready to launch and grow your business. We can also help you with an SBA back loan. We're not a lending institution. We don't have any funding to lend, but we certainly can help you secure financing as you're getting ready to launch and grow your business. We also help you recover from a disaster through low interest loans. And we can help you grow your business through maybe getting into the contracting arena, how to acquire some of those contracts and subcontracts. In addition, perhaps even exporting your product or service. Next slide. We have a great website that I certainly uh, invite you to visit us. So you have a little bit of homework if you haven't visited us. You can go to sba.gov forward slash MA for Massachusetts and this is where you'll land. On this website, you can actually get a calendar of events of all the programs that myself, um, my colleagues, our resource partners score, the Small Business Development Center, the Center for Women and Enterprise, and the VBACA Holding. We're doing webinars every single day, so please take a peek. I'm sure you'll find something that might be of help to you. In addition to that, we also post success stories. We post new initiatives that we're launching. There's a complete listing of all the SBA participating lenders. And right here at the very top where you see resource guide, that's a magazine that we publish once a year. And it's, it's kind of like our Bible. It showcases everything that the SBA has to offer, all our programs, our resource partners. Where do you go for patent and trademarks? How do you get a, a license your business? There's a wealth of information. The Chambers of Commerce are listed there. So I invite you to take a peek at the virtual um, resource guide, which is available to you, because I think you'll find it informative. Next slide. One resource that we have at the SBA, we realize that there's not enough hours in the day and sometimes life gets in the way. So SBA put together an online classroom that offers courses for entrepreneurs that range from seven to 20 minutes long on a variety of topics, starting a business, managing employees, financing, e-commerce, taxes, you name it. You can go to this website 24 seven, free of charge, take these courses. And at the end, it gives you a nice diploma from the SBA that you can add to your portfolio or your business plan. We definitely encourage you to go on here. I just was on there yesterday and there are 63 courses being offered at this time. One of them on cybersecurity, how to pivot your business. So take a peek. I think you'll find it informative and helpful. Next slide, please. We really want you to know that you're not alone. We know it's been very challenging this year. So please know that we, we're the, we're the SBA, the Small Business Administration, the one and only agency here to help small businesses as they're getting ready to start and grow. And through our resource partners, they're part of our family. You can reach out to us and talk about your business, what you're facing, and we'll work with you. We all wanna get through this together. So please, we invite you to join our newsletter. We had a newsletter that used to be published quarterly, but there's so much information now, I feel like we publish it every two weeks. So you can join us by joining us by going to sba.gov forward slash updates, and you'll receive the newsletter, which has success stories, new initiatives, um, new events coming down the pike. So we invite you to join our newsletter delivery. In addition to that, if you happen to think of something after this webinar is over, you can actually post a question in our Massachusetts District Office mailbox by going to massachusettsdo at sba.gov. We monitor this mailbox 24 hours a day and we'll get a response to you or connect you with resources that might be of help. We also invite you to meet our family, our resource partners, and you'll be hearing from them. I'm so excited that they were able to join us here today. So you'll be hearing from SCORE, the Small Business Development Center, the Center for Women and Enterprise, and how they can be of help to you as you 
we all get through this difficult time. And for those of you who might be thinking of starting a business, how they can be of assistance to you through that as well. So remember, you're not alone. You have five new friends here today through the SBA. So please reach out to us and let us know how we can be of assistance. So I'm not gonna talk about our resource partners because uh, they're gonna be uh, sharing how they can be of assistance. So Erin, did you want me to go into the finance or did you want me to just stop there? I didn't know. Oh, I'm sorry. To... No, I'm sorry. Let me pull back up. <laughs> there we go. All right. There we go. Uh... Okay. So if you go back one slide first, slide, Erin, real quick. Okay. So I'm not gonna talk too much about our resource partners, but just know that through the SBA, we're very lucky to have uh, wonderful resource partners, part of our family. These include SCORE uh, for the life of your business. We have 26 locations throughout the state with over 300 counselors mentoring where they can meet with you and help you navigate how to start and operate your business from starting a business to maybe looking for an exit strategy. We also have the Massachusetts Small Business Development Centers, and we have six of those in the state. And we have two specialty ones, one in particular focusing on exporting and one on contracting. So uh, I think we lost Lisa. Lisa, are you still there? Hmm. Lisa? Okay. So we'll see uh, if she joins us again. Um, I'm gonna stop sharing. Everyone else, Nancy, you, I, you're the only one I can see right now. You can't see her either, right? No, okay. Um, <laughs> Now I can. <laughs> now you can. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, don't know what happened there. Here, I'll pull your um, I'll pull your screen back your screen back up. Okay. We good? Yay! Can you hear me now? Yes. <laughs> Great. <laughs> we also have the Center for Women and Enterprise, one of 120 women's business centers across the country. I'm very fortunate to be the women's business ownership representative for Massachusetts. So I work closely with our women's business center. We have two of them, one of Eastern Mass and one in Central Mass. We also have the VBOC, the Veterans Business Outreach Center. For any of our veterans out there, first and foremost, thank you for your service. Uh, we realize that the SBA, many of you had to put the dream of starting a business or your business on hold to go serve our country. So the Veterans Business Outreach Center provides resources that can be of help to you as you're getting ready to launch and grow your business. And as I stated, we have the Export Center, for those of you interested in growing your business by perhaps exporting your product or service and the procurement technical assistance center for those of you who might be interested in getting to, into the contracting arena and growing your business by acquiring contracts and subcontracts next slide so we we understand many of you might need capital to launch and grow your business next slide please so we at the sba we're not a bank but we partner with lending institutions where we can help you secure the capital that you're seeking to launch and grow your business. So the next slide, Erin. What can you use SBA financing for? Well, you can use it to start a business, purchase machinery and equipment, refinance existing business debt, purchase land or real estate, or perhaps even export a product or service. Next slide. Why do lenders use SBA? Well, let's say that Erin's looking for financing. First and foremost, you all wanna to put together a business plan. So work with our resource partners. It's a roadmap where your business is today, where you wanna see it two to three years down the road. It's gonna educate the lender. Who are you? How much financing you're seeking? What you intend to do with the proceeds and how you intend to repay it. Once the lender reviews the application, they might very well say, Erin, this is great. We have a product for you. Or they might say, you know what? We can look at this with the SBA. Why? They might need a longer term on the loan. They might, the collateral might be a little bit weak under their guidelines. Every lender has different guidelines and criteria. It might be a startup, they might be a little apprehensive, or maybe the industry is a little risky. There's a lot of great restaurants out there, but it's a risky industry. So if under their guidelines, they're not 100% comfortable, that's when they can bring in the SBA to guarantee 75 to 85% of the loan, minimizing the risk, getting them to the yes. The terms are flex, they have flexible maturities, up to 10 years for working capital and 25 years for fixed assets. And oftentimes the question I get is, well, Lisa, if I get an SBA loan, is it gonna be a lower interest rate? It's something that you would negotiate with the lender, but typically it doesn't exceed prime plus two and three quarters. Just know 
Typically, they will ask you to inject 20% of the total amount, monies, equipment, something. No one's gonna give 100% financing, but all this would be part of your business plan. So work with our resource partners. They can help you put your business plan in place, making sure your T's are crossed, that your I's are dotted before you meet with the lender. Next slide, please. So there's different lending programs through the SBA. Just know that the maximum loan amount is $5 million. We have no minimum. We can guarantee 85% of loans under $150,000 and 75% of loans above $150,000. And again, you can use it to purchase, purchase machinery and equipment, refinance existing business debt. Maybe you want to open a franchise. We'd have to look over the franchise agreement as long as it's used for the business. Next slide, please. Again, lenders want to know that they're making a smart choice. So work with our resource partners. I can't stress it enough. And we all work together. We're all families. So reach out to SCORE, the Small Business Development Center, the Center for Women and Enterprise, between all of us, we'll make sure that you're in good shape before you meet with the lender. Next slide, please. So one product that SBA put out there to help you is this lender match. And lender match is kind of like the match.com between lenders and entrepreneurs. So the way that it works is, and Erin, if you could hit the next slide, you would go on the website, sba.gov forward slash lender match. You would fill out a two page application that's viewed by 300 SBA participating lenders. They would reach out to those, those that are interested will reach out to you. You would have a conversation. And if you're interested, you would pursue to apply for the loan. It will not hurt you. It's not gonna hurt your credit. It's just to help identify a lender that might be able to give you the financing that you're seeking. So once in it, when you're ready, please reach out to Lender Match. This might help you find the lender to give you the financing you're looking for. So you learned about the counseling and training. You learned about capital. So how can we help you grow your business, right? Well, next slide, please, Erin. One area is contracting. The federal government is the largest buyer of goods and services. We buy $500 billion of everything every year from paper clips to jet planes. And 23% of everything that we purchase, we must purchase from small business. We're given goals. We have to give 5% of everything that we purchase to women owned businesses, 3% to service disabled. So there's a lot of opportunities. Visit our website, our calendar of events, Often we hold these webinars entitled Opening Doors to Government Contracting. It talks about the myths, the realities of doing business with the federal government, how to position yourself. Next slide. So again, we're the largest buyer of goods and services. You can visit our website at sba.gov forward slash contracting. Next slide. And just know that there are um, opportunities if you did, do get certified. Um, so there's something called set-asides. So there's set-asides for women-owned business, small business owners. So it gets everybody else out of the room. So it gives you more of an opportunity to acquire these contracts. So if you're interested in learning more about that, let us know, and we'd be glad to provide you information. Next slide. Also, once and if you're ready, you can connect with our procurement technical assistance representatives. All we ask is that you be in business for two years. And what these procurement technical assistance representatives do is they help you navigate how to do business with the federal, state, and local government. They can help you put, put together a capability statement. So if you're interested in contracting, please reach out to me and I'll be glad to connect you with our resource partners and resources that can be of assistance to you. Next slide. So reimagine your potential as you branch out also. Next slide. One way is by exporting your product or service. So I don't know if you know, but nearly 90%, 96% of consumers live outside the US and two thirds of the world's purchasing power is in foreign countries. So we can help you identify which country would be more likely to wanna to do business with you. You can visit sba.gov forward slash exporting to learn a little bit more. And next slide. Through our Export Assistance Center, which you saw on the previous slide, you can get counseling and training. You can find buyers internationally. You can get funding through your export express loan or export working capital loans. So this is exporting is something that you're interested in. Please let us know and we'll be able to connect you with the resources that can be of assistance to you. Again, we have a great mass export center. Paula Murphy is the director there. She does a fantastic job, she and her team. Right now, everything is remote, but they are available to connect with, to speak with you via email, phone, whatever works for you and help you um, pursue your exporting um, dream. Next slide. We invite you to follow us on Twitter. Again, visit our Massachusetts District Office webpage and subscribe to our newsletter. So this is a quick snapshot. I know we have our resource partners and we have our, our 
friends from the state that are ready to present. So I don't wanna to take too much time, but if I can be of assistance, please don't hesitate to contact me. I think the next slide has my contact information, Erin. I think I put it on there, yep. And enjoy the rest of the session. And please know that you're not alone. At least you have new friends here. So let us know how we can be of help to you. Thanks, Erin. Thank you, Lisa. And my apologies for stopping uh, your presentation That's short. Okay. <laughs> so um, while I pull up the other PowerPoint, uh, I'm going to introduce Nancy Girardi from the Massachusetts Small Business Development Center. Um, I'm going to pull up your slide. So Nancy, if you want to start kind of your introduction, I'll, I'll get your presentation up and going. Sure. Well, Lisa did a great job. Um, we are one of the partners of the SBA. As soon as my slides come up, I'll be much more fluid. <laughs> Um, so we are so fortunate. We are hosted by Salem State University up in Salem. We do cover the counties of Suffolk, Essex, and Middlesex counties. Um, One second. Okay, there we go. Not seeing it yet. There we go. So um, again, my name is Nancy Girardi. I'm um, the Northeast Regional Director for the Massachusetts Small Business Development Center. You heard uh, Lisa from the SBA mention that earlier. We are one of the partners. Next slide. The SBA has four partners. Again, Lisa said this, we probably should have coordinated our slides, but SCORE, absolutely. The Center for Women and Enterprise Veteran Business Outreach Center and then we're the fourth one, we're the Massachusetts Small Business Development Center. And that is um, where I'm the Northeast Regional Director. And like Lisa said, you can use one, you can use all. These are resources that whatever helps your business grow, we are all there to support you. Next slide, please. So the um, SBDC, it doesn't really roll off the tongue. It's Massachusetts Small Business Development Center. MSBDC has um, eight advising and outreach locations and specialty offices. There's um, the Export Center, which Lisa referred to um, out of Boston, the Government Sales Advisory Program, the Procurement Program, um, Technical Assistance. And then there's an office, an advisory office out in the Berkshires, Central, Southeast, Western, and I'm Northeast. Um, if you have, uh, if, you ever need any assistance. The great thing about the um, SBDCs is it's a network and we've had clients who have started their business in Massachusetts and then have gone to New Hampshire and we can refer them because it's all a network. There's an SBDC in every single state. So um, there's always that support for you. Next slide, please. The Northeast Regional Office of the Massachusetts Small Business Development Center, MSBDC network provides, what we provide is one-to-one -one free comprehensive services focusing on business, business growth and strategies, financing and loan assistance, strategic marketing and operational analysis. Really, um, the, the people that I've helped, they, they like coming in and just trying some ideas out. We're very um, you know, supportive of um, you know, trying new things, see what works. But then we also have that, you know, got to get that business plan done and everything Lisa mentioned before. Um, so we're a good sounding board and a good place to come to, to help grow your ideas. And the thing that's so interesting is we worked, last year I worked with almost 300 people myself, and that's half the number my advisors worked with. Um, so sometimes uh, a client will come in and say something and I can say, well, you know what we did? We tried this. Everything's confidential, so I can't really give names or businesses. But I said, you know, I had a client that tried to do this and it worked well for them. So maybe you want to try doing that. And um, I used to do real estate closings and people are always so nervous when they buy a house. And I said, that's why you need an attorney, because you might buy one, two, three houses in your lifetime. I've done three closings this week. So I kind of know the stuff. It's, it's nice to come in and talk to someone who's been there, done that. I've also owned a business and I started a business that was affected by the pandemic. So I, I, I feel your pain, I've been there. Um, and sometimes it's nice to come in and make that connection and to have that resource. In addition to the free or low, uh, we offer free or low cost educational training workshops. We used to be in person and of course, just like Erin is running now, 
we're um, doing it via Zoom. Um, and they've had a good response. Um, sometimes our training, uh, our training workshops cause people to come up with questions that we have to answer on a more personal level with them. It's not generic information that we can give out to um, the masses. So it's, it's nice, um, the workshops are nice to see if, if the MSBDC will work for you, and then you can make an appointment to meet with them for one, um, one to one free, conf, free co um, confidential advising. Um, we have a full time staff of business advisors, they're very diverse. Our office has a Spanish speaking advisor, she's terrific. Um, we're supported by the resources of Salem State University. Last week, if you were fortunate enough to be in our constant contact database as a client of ours, you were able to have, um, we did four presentations from students on social media marketing, um, online presence. Oh my gosh, they were so good. Um, and you know, they're, they're the group, they grew up with this tech, it rolls off their tongue. It's how people are shopping. It's so um, important during this pandemic to have an online presence if your business um, is such. And um, we were so happy to have the resources of their fresh young brain cells. That's how I like to call my interns. Um, but they did a fantastic job. So, um, and I got all kinds of positive feedback. So that was really wonderful. So we do have those workshops. Um, next slide, please. So the Northeast office, like I said, we cover Essex and Middlesex and portions of Suffolk. The Southeast takes the other portion. If you go on and you ask for the Northeast office, you will be set up um, with an advisor from the Northeast office. Next slide, please. So how successful are we? You, you say, you know, all these services, what do we do? So um, we are set just like Lisa with goals every year and uh, we are, our efforts help supported 2,247 jobs in our territory. We had, uh, last year we brought in 1,146 new clients. Um, our outreach, doing workshops and being there to help people word of mouth has been huge. Um, we have been able to help, uh, like I said, 1,146 clients and um, supported 2,247 jobs. Here's something interesting though with the pandemic. We had a goal of 63 business starts. That's for the year. We were asked to help assist in 63 business starts. We actually did 74 or 117% um, above goal. Um, this is because, and um, I, I, I really want to emphasize this, the pandemic, and I'm not going to belittle it, was extremely difficult to small businesses. And I absolutely understand that my small business suffered from it. So I know the pain. But it also um, was an opportunity, and I hate the word pivot, so I'm going to use toggle now, was um, businesses toggled. We had clients that never had curbside service that now do. Um, we had, I had a client that, um, it, you know, toggled a little bit and now is in restaurant aesthetic design with um, social distancing. Uh, so that's a business she had in interior design. She, it shifted a little bit to um, restaurants. Uh, fantastic. So we had businesses like that. We also had a lot of new businesses. We have a client who makes a little blue feet um, to tell you which way to go. And that didn't exist before this. So yes, it's been very difficult. But I always say with entrepreneurs, wherever there's a problem, and God knows this is a problem, there will lie a solution in which an entrepreneur will find. And um, we do have entrepreneurs finding solutions. And our last one is our capital infusion. Lisa talked a little bit about this, but we had a goal of um, getting assisting with loans for small businesses to get that money in there to work in the economy. And our goal was 10 million. And we actually put into the economy over $22 million or 226%, it shouldn't say above goal, but 226% um, of our goal we infused into the economy. So that means there are investors, there are banks giving loans, there are people putting money into the economy, even in this uh, difficult time. Next slide, please. So if you'd like any of the assistance that I mentioned, please reach out to Caitlin Muldoon. She's our client service coordinator. She's fantastic. She manages my schedule. So reach out uh, and all the advisors schedules, as a matter of fact. 
reach out to Caitlin Muldoon, and that would be kmuldoon at salemstate.edu, our host university, and she'll schedule an appointment with me or one of the advisors to assist you. Next slide, please. So this is my contact information. And absolutely, like Lisa said, we are all partners working together and our goal is to help you. So whatever works best for your small business, that's our job and that's what we do. Thank you very much. Nancy, I really appreciate it. Um, that's very helpful. And please, small businesses, reach out to Nancy. She, you know, as she said, the word pivot, toggle. I think right now is the best time to be thinking about your business plan and, and what it looks like for 2021. I think there are some things that have happened during this time that, um, you know, are here to stay, uh, whether that be an online presence um, and, and stuff like that. So please reach out to her. Next, I want to introduce uh, Maria DeStefano from the Massachusetts Office of Business Development. And we also are joined by uh, Kiko Ordell. I apologize. I miss... Um, said it, or, or L, I'm sorry, for the Mass Office of Travel and Tourism. They're gonna talk about um, the resources that are available at the state uh, in regards to kind of business development and then also the mass, uh, the local Massachusetts campaign that's going on that's uh, free uh, for our small business community. So I am going to hand it over to uh, Maria, if you don't mind turning on your screen. Great, thank you, can you hear me? Yes, you're good. Great. Thank you, Erin. Um, good morning, everyone. And thank you for joining us this morning. Um, so I have to say on behalf of my partners on the call today, I, I, we have to thank Erin for putting the event together. I assure you that coordinating all of these local state federal partners along with the chamber, elected officials and all of our various slide decks, that was not an easy undertaking. So thank you, Erin. Um, so um, next, uh, next slide, please. Um, so, um, as Aaron said, I'm, the, I'm Maria DiStefano, the Massachusetts of uh, the uh, Northeast Regional Director for the Mass Office of Business Development, and my agency. Uh, so, we work for the Executive Office of Housing and Economic Development. It is one of the cabinet uh, agencies. The Mass Office of Business Development, um, also known as MOBD, helps businesses relocating to Massachusetts and businesses wishing to expand their current operations here. So our, our staff operates in um, six regions across the state so we can provide uh, businesses with on the ground knowledge, viable connections, um, and we work closely with the pu public and private sectors to coordinate a whole range of resources at your disposal. We serve as a single point of contact. We, we facilitate access to resources. We promote job growth and retention. We stimulate private investment and we help businesses thrive in Massachusetts. Um, next slide, please. Um, so one of our, uh, one of the largest um, programs that my agency MOBD manages is um, the Economic Development Incentive Program, also known as EDIP. Um, through our EDIP program, we seek to create new jobs and help businesses grow. And we encourage growth by offering credits to lower taxes in exchange for job creation. Um, so um, it's really a, a partnership between um, the local, um, the, the, um, community, the community in which a business is looking to grow in or locate to, um, the business, and um, the state. Uh, next slide, please. Thank you. Um, so in addition to administering the state's tax incentive program, the Mass Office of Business Development also serves as your single point of contact for other state agency and quasi-governmental partners. Um, so it's funny, I, I, I joked one time to John and he, John from the chamber, and he loves um, saying this, that I was born and raised in East Boston. So sometimes I will joke that um, if you need something from the state, you know, give me a call. Let me see if I can find out who to connect you to because I was born and raised in East Boston. So I often say, um, I know a guy who knows a guy. So I can probably get you um, an answer or someone that knows the answer. Um, so some of the other agencies and partners that I talked about, some of them include, um, you can see them up on the screen. I'm not going to go over all of them, but there, there's a couple I want to call out. Um, we work with, we have what's called a workforce training fund program. And that helps address business productivity and competitiveness by providing resources to Massachusetts businesses to fund training in current and newly hired employees. Um, they offer three types of training opportunities with up to $250,000 in a matching um, program. Um, 
We also have financial partnerships. Um, we partnered with the SBA um, and with Lisa, Lisa Welch, the amazing Lisa Welch and her amazing team that you've already heard from. Um, we have Mass Growth Capital Corporation through financing and managerial assistance. MGCC works to create economic opportunities for all. They provide and support inclusive business resources to organizations across the Commonwealth. Um, we also have for larger businesses, we have uh, another lending arm of the state is the mass development is mass development. And they're the state's finance and development agency. We, they work with businesses, nonprofits, banks, and communities to stimulate economic growth. Through these collaborations, they help create jobs, increase the number of housing units, revitalize urban environments, and address factors limiting economic growth through transportation, energy, and infrastructure deficiencies. Um, another a state agency is the supplier is supplier diversity or SDO. Um, their certification is good with all state agencies, Massachusetts quasi public authorities, general and prime contractors who hold major state contracts with affirmative purchasing benchmarks and with many cities and towns. Um, there's a lot of private companies that have affirmative purchasing programs and those companies um, it oftentimes recognize the SDO certification. Um, we also partner with uh, mass hire. Um, they are through labor and workforce development. They're located. Um, they're also located um, regionally throughout the state. Um, they work with both job seekers and businesses looking to hire. Um, so for job seekers, uh, they create trust and reliability. They connect job seekers across the Commonwealth um, to quality education, skill training, uh, and employment opportunities. And for the businesses, they leverage flexibility, expertise, and knowledge to partner with businesses to meet their hiring and industry needs. Um, and also when you're hiring through them, for businesses that are looking to hire, they're hiring through them, uh, these folks have been vetted. And so it just makes your hiring process a lot easier. Um, it, Sometimes there's also what they call on the on the job training fund grants that can they can sometimes do a reimbursement um, help to uh, reimburse up to I believe six months of a person's salary when they come work for you when they come through mass hire. Um, and um, on there, my, my last item on that slide is the Massachusetts Office of Travel and Tourism. Um, this is one of MOBD's sister agencies. Um, on the next slide, um, I'm going to give you my contact information, and then I'm going to introduce my colleague. Um, so as you can see, uh, my information is on there. I have two offices, two regional offices. I have one in Gloucester in some in a co-working space, and I ha also have an office at the Enterprise Center at Salem State University on campus. Um, my email address is maria.destefano at mass.gov. And um, if you want to connect with me on Twitter or LinkedIn, um, if you want to do that and tell me about your business and then you want to um, tag me, I, am, I will uh, retweet or reshare on LinkedIn about your business. Um, the, I feel like the most important thing on this slide really is uh, the link to the state's COVID-19 uh, guidance and resource for businesses that is um, updated. Uh, quite often uh, with the latest, with what uh, the latest changes um, to the guidance. Um, so now um, it's my pleasure to introduce my colleague to talk about our campaign for small and Main Street type businesses. Um, I want to welcome the Executive Director of the Mass Office of Travel and Tourism, um, Keiko Oral. Keiko? Hi, Maria. Thank you so much. And thank you, Aaron, for setting up this um, great opportunity for businesses to learn more about what's happening in the state. Uh, I'm going to share my screen and I just wanted to quickly go through uh, what our office um, is tasked with. We are the we are the Massachusetts Office of Travel and Tourism. I'm Keiko Matsuda Oral, the Executive Director, and our office is tasked with promoting Massachusetts as a leisure and destination, leisure and business travel destination, both internationally and domestically. Um, and we partner with we partner with so many state agencies um, groups because tourism has such a, a broad reach. So these are some of our key collaborations. They're national, international, and regional as well. And uh, we have a, a broad reach because the industry is is uh, so broad. Our key marketing programs, and this is where I'm hoping that if there are businesses on the line that they will take note. 
Our website is Visit and May, and businesses associated with travel and tourism can be featured and linked to Visit and May by creating a free account. Essentially, we're the marketing arm of the state agencies out there, and uh, as I'm also the chair of the Mass Marketing Partnership, and we are working together to market market the state. As one of those initiatives, we are running a current, our current campaign is My, My Local MA. We're working with a consultant, Think Argus, and the effort is really to help our Massachusetts residents to choose local when they shop, eat, and travel. And it's a behavioral campaign, and it's, we've for months been sitting in our houses. It's very easy to order things online. And this effort is really to have people to pause and to think about the good that they can do in their community and to think about putting their money where their heart is right here in, that, in Massachusetts. That's our tagline. How does it work? We're, again, we're caught trying to get people to pause and think before they purchase or make a travel decision and then give people a good reason to choose local. Our campaign is statewide. We have a, an expected impression of 102 plus million impressions. The numbers are speaking for themselves. We began the campaign in, uh, at the end of August and uh, we've had seen, seen, seen tremendous success. This is about creating a movement. So typically our, our state tourism agency would be outward focused to Connecticut, New Hampshire, Maine, uh, and internationally to, to the UK, to Europe, and trying to bring those folks into Massachusetts. Because of COVID, that's not where we're at. We are a, we are focused on Massachusetts residents, helping them understand how wonderful our state is, how important their, their actions are as to uh, where they purchase and where they stay. So here's, here's an example of some of the print pieces that you may have seen around the community. And then we have a commercial that's been running and I just wanted to take a, a minute because it's an awesome commercial. It's not a minute, it's, a, it's half a minute. <laughs> So that is our campaign and um, how do you get involved? How do businesses, how do uh, town officials, everyone on this, on this call can, can get involved? You can utilize the marketing assets that are found at our website, lovemylocalma.com. And that's uh, badges and logos that you can attach to your photos, use the, those as marketing assets by displaying those in, uh, posters in windows, posting on social media, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, doing newsletters, email blasts. As more and more people join the My Local MA movement, the stronger we will be and Team Massachusetts will um, be recovering faster. Empowering businesses is what this campaign is about. And we, we've created a business toolkit that has a number of resources for you to use to get the message out that, that you're a part of the campaign. And we, we tailored the toolkit so that if you have a background in graphics, great, you can, you can customize some things, but we also have ready to go assets. And if you don't have that background, you can click, download, and you can use. So we, we really wanted to make it easy for people. We have, as I mentioned, a toolkit, and it's it's pretty clear. There's ready to use resources, and then make your own resources where you can customize and put in um, John's Pizza Shop. So we're also getting folks to start using the lingo. Talk like the locals. Talk about how much it matters. Buying local creates opportunities. It cre it's good for growth. It creates jobs. And as we begin singing the same song, that's where the message starts to really break through and, and help people make, make changes. We've got examples for um, 
potential social media posts. Our hashtags is, is my local MA and our twin hashtag is mask up MA because along with all of these, with, along with this campaign, we're encouraging folks to, to, to be out there, but be safe and to mask up. Our short slogans, put your money where your heart is right here in Massachusetts. I, I, I just, I love it. Local is more than a place. It's who we are. Show Main Street some love and make local thrive. Stay safe, buy local. We, we have a, a huge partnership of folks who have joined the movement, over 300 on the lovemylocalma.com website. And these are just some examples of how people are use, using the badges and using the logos to get a benefit from the statewide campaign. We've also had other um, chambers and, and chambers, business improvement districts, main streets, local first, a lot of, lot of interest in the campaign. And some folks are already doing local um, campaigns. They're, they're building it into uh, what they're currently, currently doing. In Amherst, we have Takeover, Takeover Tuesday where they are just highlighting on Instagram things to do, where to eat, where to shop. And, and that's really, we're the marketers. We're trying to get the customers into your business. So that's my presentation. The presentation is to think local. The website is lovemylocalma.com and the state agency website is visitma.com. Again, my name is Keiko Matsudo Oral. My email is at the bottom and I want to thank Maria for inviting me and as well as Aaron and just look forward to hearing from you. Well, thank you, um, my friends from the state. That's very helpful and I, I didn't realize, you know, um, how large that campaign was and that might be something that we can think about uh, moving forward more at our local level. I know we've done a number of uh, local campaigns, but something that uh, we could probably look a little more into. So great, thank you so much. And just one more thing, Erin, the campaign will run through the end of June. It was scheduled to, uh, to end in December, but it will be running through June. So please, please get involved. Great, well, thank you. Thank you. Great. So now I'm going to hand it over to um, Bill at SCORE and then we'll have uh, Beth Ann finish us up here and then we'll open it up for some questions. But thank you so much. Uh, we really appreciate it. And uh, if you wouldn't mind putting your contact information, I know they're on the slides that I'll share, but in the chat box, that would be great. So with that being said, Bill, I'm going to hand it over to you. I'm going to pull up your slide right now. Hopefully it won't take me as long this time, but <laughs> you never know. So I'll hand it over. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Aaron and uh, Lisa and John for inviting SCORE to participate in this session. And uh, I'm going to continue dumping information at you like a, the fire hose that you've been getting all morning. Uh, it, it's a pleasure for me to talk about SCORE. I've been with SCORE now for 18 years. It is a volunteer organization and we are, SCORE was originally formed in 1964. And um, we're trying as hard as we can to foster and encourage vibrant small business communities. And we are available to help people, businessmen, uh, start a business, grow a business, change direction in a business, or exit a business if they have reached that point in their life where they're trying to do that. And part of our vision is to support small business in any way or in shape that we can. And uh, one of our core values involves client success. And that's why I do it as a volunteer. And we are a, a large volunteer organization, but it feels really good when you see someone that you helped a year, you know, this week or this month or next month, the last month, and three or four or five months later, you see them again and they're happy in their business, it's growing and succeeding, and they may have questions or whatever, but it's about success of the client's business and the client defines what success is. Next slide. Um, as indicated on this slide, we provide free business advice and mentoring. 
and that is all confidential, SCORE has a very, very restrictive confidentiality policy. Um, and we do not talk to anyone else about the client's business. Um, and we work with them so that they get the best information that they possibly can. Uh, we offer training courses that are available. Uh, we offer them in the Northeast Massachusetts area, which I'll talk about later. But there are also national score programs and there are also other chapters around the country that offer training programs. And uh, generally they're free and they can be very beneficial. Um, we also have templates, business templates. Um, a number of times this morning, people have mentioned the importance of a business plan. And on the SCORE Northeast Massachusetts website, we have a business plan template. On the SCORE National website, there's a business plan template that's very similar. On the SBA website, there is a business plan template. I, I can't impress, can't ex, uh, indicate how important it is if you're looking to start a business or grow a business or understand your business to have a business plan. Next slide. Um, as I mentioned, we are a volunteer organization. There are over 10,000 of us nationwide. Um, and we serve clients across the country. And we have a network that we keep, can keep track of. If I find somebody that needs a contact on the West Coast or needs a contact about agriculture or farming or those kind of things, I can tap into this network of national volunteers and uh, connect clients local clients here up with them. And uh, occasionally I'll get a client from somewhere else in the country um, that's looking for information about biz doing business in Massachusetts or um, technology that I may have been involved in or, or whatever um, background they need. So we are an interconnected 10,000 plus volunteer organization. Next slide. Um, this is, 2019 data that SCORE nationally created over 29,000 jobs, uh, new, new, not new jobs, new businesses, almost 100,000 new jobs, um, 58,000 clients raised their revenues. The, the, there's a great benefit in talking to a SCORE counselor about the issues that are relevant to your business. Um, the next slide. Uh, we have 45 mentors in the uh, in our chapter, which is Northeast Massachusetts, and we go from Medford, Malden, Revere, up to the New Hampshire border, and from the water uh, out to 495. And those are not hard and fast boundaries. If someone wants to work with us in the Northeast Massachusetts chapter, we're more than happy to talk to them and help them or connect them up with the Boston chapter or the Worcester chapter, chapter Cape Cod chapter. But it's a, a, conglomerate, a conglomeration of people helping each other. And the, the goal continues to be to help people out to see that they get the assistance they need in the time frame they need. Um, we will counsel with an individual for as long as they feel we are helping them. I have had clients that I've worked with for as long as 10 years. Um, typically we'll start out and maybe meet every two weeks or every four weeks. And then as the client gets more comfortable, it'll stretch to once every three months and maybe once every six months. Yeah, I have clients that I work with and uh, we are at kind of a number of counselors from the chapter will work together and will kind of act like a board of directors um, for an organization. So the contact information is there on for uh, that. Uh, just to talk a little bit more about SCORE Northeast Massachusetts, we use a team counseling uh, model. In other words, we will have typically three counselors, possibly two counselors in the counseling session. And the point would be to have two individuals, two senior individuals that have um, different backgrounds. 
and we'll listen and understand what the client's issues are. And then we'll look at them from two different perspectives because of the two different counselors or three different counselors. And we'll come up with uh, some ideas, some things that the client can consider. We are mentors and counselors, we're not consultants. And to appreciate the difference is we will give a client ideas and thoughts and opinions. The client is responsible to make the decisions. They can take our ideas and run with them, or um, they can say, no, I don't like any of your ideas. We'll go someplace else, go with a different idea. And that's fine, but at least they've had the value and the benefit of the thought process of senior people that have either owned their own business or been uh, senior executives in larger organizations. We do counsel out of uh, 11 locations when we're, when we're able to meet with counselors, with clients face to face. Um, so with the COVID situation, we've gone to a completely Zoom model. And uh, I was a little, in all honesty, I was a little reluctant to go with a Zoom model to begin with. But now having been doing it for nine months, um, it works very, very well. Um, people don't have to commute. They don't have to travel to us. Uh, we can talk with them and, and Zoom is working out. But there is that benefit to sitting face to face with someone. We'd like to get back to that model at some point in the future. Uh, it's important for our counselors as we counsel a client to understand what that client's needs are. Um, and so we will ask a lot of questions and go from there. I also wanna mention that we do work with uh, 501c3 not-for-profit organizations. And over the time that I've been in Northeast Massachusetts, which is now eight years, uh, probably work with two or three or four not-for-profit organizations per year and help them figure out how to get the not-for-profit uh, approval from the IRS and then how to manage the business. And managing a not-for-profit is not that different from managing a regular business. Um, the only difference is in how the taxes are handled, the taxes for donors. Um, and I, I will add one other Thing. SCORE is always looking for experienced business people that would like to be counselors. Um, as I mentioned, it is very enjoyable to see someone uh, six months or a year or longer after you've counseled them and know that they are and have them tell you that they're a success. And that works very, very well. And it feels very good to do that. Um, once a year, the SCORE organization, and we're in the process of doing that right now, surveys all our clients for that year to find out uh, whether we help them start a business, whether we help them grow a business. Uh, we also do a survey after the initial session with a client to make sure that they are satisfied that they got the information they needed. Anyway, my name is William McLeod. My email address is william.mcleod at scorevolunteer.org. And uh, contact me through the chapter the tech chapter phone number is on there. Um, it seems to work better if you come through on the internet. Well, with that, I will uh, pass it back to Erin. The joys of uh, working from home. Thank you, Bill. Um, so I'm going to uh, pass this on to Beth Ann very quickly and um, we'll, we'll move along there. Hello, everyone. Well, Erin, you're pulling up my slides, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I'll just introduce myself uh, while we're waiting. My name is Beth Ann DeHaan, and I am the um, project manager for COVID business recovery in for the Center for Women in Enterprise in Eastern Massachusetts. Um, but I also work on um, lots of other aspects of creating and growing businesses in our Eastern Massachusetts office. I am putting my contact information in the chat. It will also be on one of my slides um, as soon as Aaron Here we go. gets them up. There we go. Can everyone see it? 
Uh, yep, yep, there we go. So you can go ahead to the next slide. So that's my uh, next one, yep. So who are we? We are a uh, business partner of the SBA um, and we provide technical assistance for small businesses. Um, our focus is on women and veterans. We also have a veterans, we run the Veterans Business um, Council of New England, um, but we do work with men and um, others as well. So um, if you are interested in our services, we are here for everyone, but we do concentrate on, on, on women owned businesses. Um, we provide resources for people looking to start, grow and exit their business a little bit like what SCORE says. We, we recognize that um, at some point you do need to um, sell or exit your business. So we do help with that. Um, we're an economic empowerment organization and we really uh, strive to help um, women launch and successfully sustain their businesses with a focus on underserved uh, areas of, of the state. So you can go to the next slide. So what do we do? Uh, we provide consultations. We have a whole roster of wonderful volunteer consultants who will meet with clients one-on-one um, -on -one, uh, free of charge. If you have a particular um, issue that you need to talk to a consultant about, whether it be a legal issue or um, you need help with your marketing or financing, et cetera, we have lots of consultants that can um, meet with you one-on-one. -on -one. We also offer lots of classes and workshops. So this used to be all in person, obviously. Um, since COVID, we have gone like everyone else do a completely remote um, model, but we offer webinars and classes both on um, COVID specific related um, topics, but also uh, steps to start your business, uh, legal considerations for your business, business plan writing. Uh, we also offer multi-week uh, classes to help you really dig into how to write your business plan, uh, et cetera. Lots of different things. Um, in terms of COVID um, resources, we've offered classes on class cash flow management during COVID. Um, we've done several webinars on PPP forgiveness and the idle loans, how to apply for those in addition to the, the Massachusetts grants. We helped um, many, many businesses apply for those grants. Um, we've done we've started a women's networking uh, forum. Uh, we just had our first one last week, which was wonderful. So we're gonna make that a, at least a monthly, maybe twice a month thing where women businesses owners can just get together and exchange ideas. Uh, it was really a wonderful thing. So we plan to continue doing that. Um, we've done webinars on digital marketing. We have a, um, a webinar this evening on using Facebook during COVID. Um, so lots of different things. Most of those are free of charge. Um, and you can find all of those on our um, webpage uh, under Eastern Massachusetts. I put our website in the chat as well. We also have networking events. Um, as, as I mentioned, the women networking um, thing that I did last week. Uh, we have an annual one day conference, a women's business leadership conference that we hold every year this year with was in October. And we also offer WeBank certification services for um, businesses that are looking for the WeBank certification. I can go to the next slide. Um, where do we do it? So in Massachusetts, we have two offices, one in Boston and one in Central Mass. Um, we have, um, people on staff who speak English, Spanish. My direct colleague is a native Spanish speaker, so we can help people um, in, in those uh, languages. We also have people who speak Mandarin and Haitian Creole in our, in our organization. Um, as I said, we offer um, webinars and trainings in lots of different things. Uh, for pre-startup, we offer courses in steps to start your business. Uh, is entrepreneurship right for you? Business plan writing, legal considerations. Um, if you're sort of in the early stages and you're just getting started, we have um, accounting, banking services, employment law and marketing classes. And then if you are sort of in the next phase of your business and really wanting to grow, um, we have leadership classes, certification um, services, and then we offer a six week, what we call a power forward, um, uh, session that we will be starting at the end of uh, January, beginning of February. So those are all available on our website. Um, some of these classes we offer every single month, so you can um, jump in at any time. Others we offer, you know, more on a one-off basis. 
Um, for businesses impacted by COVID, like I said, I am concentrating most of my efforts on, on this uh, topic. So we are working with businesses on um, finding loan and grant programs, both at the federal and state level, um, working on revamping your marketing strategy, perhaps making it a more digital focused strategy, how to reopen safely, um, tracking your expenses and cash flow management during COVID. We did a webinar last night on that, um, just strategic innov innovation, finding new revenue streams for your business. We did uh, a webinar uh, specifically for the food and beverage community about finding new revenue streams, sort of how to survive. Um, and then a lot on social media. As I mentioned, we do have a Facebook um, webinar this evening that is proving to be very, very popular. Um, is with regard to certification, we have people on staff that can help with federal, state, and city uh, certification pro processes, WeBank, WASB, um, lots of different things. So we can help you navigate those things as well. Next slide. Yeah, these are just some of the certification options that um, are available to businesses who are interested in contracting with the government. Um, so we can help uh, with all of these things. Next slide. That's it. Yeah, and my so my um, email and uh, phone number is in the chat. I encourage you to reach out to me if you have any questions. And again, we um, mostly work with women small businesses, but we also work with men as well. So don't be scared off if you think that we offer something that that would be useful to your business. Please feel free to uh, reach out. And again, our website is there where you can access all of our classes, most of which are um, free of charge. So thanks for having me, Aaron. Uh, I really enjoyed speaking to everybody and uh, stay safe in the snowstorm. <laughs> thank you so much, Stephanie. I really appreciate it. And thank you to all of our pre presenters today. All this information is really helpful, not only to the, the people that are attending today. I know today can be a hard day, as you learned. I have a one-year-old running around screaming, so it makes things a little difficult. But um, you know, this will be you know is recorded. We will share uh, with other uh, the small business community. So now I wanted to open it up to questions. Uh, if uh, you do have a question, feel free to ask it in the chat box, um, or also you can um, raise your hand if you want to turn. Everyone wants to turn their cameras back on. Uh, I think that would be really helpful. Um, I know I did see a question. Um, not um, from Marianne Ronka. Ronka, I don't know if Marianne, you want to ask it. I see it in the chat box, or I can ask it for you. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sorry, yeah. sorry. Um, you know what? I'll just ask it. Um, will the new round of business uh, EDLI being passed by Congress this week be available to those who have already received a loan this past spring? So I don't know. So I'll take that, <laughs> Lisa. Um, right now, there is talk about, uh, are you talking the IDLE or the PPP? What does she refer to? So, the IDLE. There, the IDLE, yeah. The IDLE. So right now, we're waiting to get further guidance on that. As of right now, what did happen uh, is that the deadline was December 21st, and that's been extended to December 31st. And the maximum amount under those loans is $150,000 with a 30 year term. So if we already received one, we're able to, to add to it? I have not seen um, that you can reapply, but I, we, like I said, we're waiting to get further guidance on that. Nancy, have you seen anything that I've missed? We received it six months ago. Yeah, we received it six months ago. So. Right, and that's fine. Uh, but you'll be getting, do you uh, subscribe to our newsletter delivery, our gov delivery, our newsletter? You can go to sba.gov forward slash updates. I will. And that will, have the, that will have the most up-to-date information. I understand you received a loan and you're interested in apply, applying for a second loan. Right. I haven't seen that happen yet. We're waiting for further guidance on that. What we did receive is that the extension, the de deadline has been extended from December 21st to December 31st. So we have a little extra time for those folks who didn't get to apply to apply to get some idle funding. Okay. And may I have the, um, uh, the URL again for uh, the newsletter? Yes, if you can go to sba.gov forward slash updates. And you can actually go to the archive and look at the previous uh, um, newsletters that have been released. We just did one yesterday um, announcing the extension. Thank you. You're welcome.
Great. Uh, does anyone else have any questions? I see Bill, your videos on, um, which is great. Thank you. Do you have anything you'd like to ask? Oh, no. I'm good. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. We have uh, Bill from, sorry, Bill from OTC Industries. Are you... uh, sorry, we can't hear you. <laughs> You can also type it in the chat box and I can ask it directly as well. Um, and I know I had a few questions um, from folks when they registered, um, you know, what resources or financial support will you need to succeed in 2021? And Lisa, this probably goes back to the same question you just answered, any similar SBA disaster loans, but you'll said that will come through, you know, once you know, just to follow your newsletter. Um, and I know there was a few people asking about um, advertising and marketing opportunities. And I think what Kiko covered is great, but I also think a number of you should uh, contact uh, the other organizations here. They might be able to put a market, help you with put a marketing plan together as uh, kind of we move forward this next year. Um, we'll wait. Um, was, okay, so this is from Bill. Um, he was curious if there was anything that was set up for single person LLCs or gig workers. Anyone? In regards to, I'm sorry, Bill, uh, just like SBA programs or just programs in general moving for, forward, I'm assuming kind of the PPP and IDLE. Just in general, can anyone answer that? Um, I can answer that. So if they were set up as a single person LLC, the things that were available to them is using their LLC from their, um, Schedule C of their 2019, um, and they could have received money for the PPP, the Paycheck Protection Program, but that isn't in effect right now. And they can also um, still apply, thank you, Lisa, until the 31st for the EIDL, um, the Economic Injury Disaster Loan. And it, I really have done so many of these, I can walk you through it in like 20 minutes. Um, so that's the EIDL. That is a loan, but it is a low interest loan over 30 years. And if it helps your business survive, then it's fantastic. And it's no longer available, but the pandemic unemployment assistance would have applied. So um, there were lots of things available. It's all a timing and to be informed. And that's why signing on to the newsletters is so important. So you're first in line. I hope that helped. Maria has a little more to add. Yeah, I also want to say that is a great question, Bill, and, and thank you, Nancy. And I also want to add that Erin um, um, is going to send out everybody's contact info and um, reach out to us. So particularly with, so things happen really quickly all the time in terms of programs being funded uh, or not funded and different programs coming aboard. Um, particularly with COVID, right? So um, all of a sudden there's an announcement and there's like, there's a new program coming out. So um, I, I wanna say stay connected with us um, and to the, all the businesses that, uh, that are on the call, as long as you can connect with one of us, we're all gonna get you connected to each other, right? So whether it's you're reaching out to Aaron, you're reaching out to the electeds, our, our partners, um, they will get you connected to us. Um, we all work together. There's no, um, we don't compete. So we're all working together to help you grow your business. Um, and also too, you never know who we're kind of running into. So quick story, I, I heard the other day about, um, and I met with someone over at one of the colleges um, in the state. And she said that they're now using their Title IV money um, to fund a program for their students rather than do just a work share where they're like, you know, sitting in the office making photocopies. They're actually looking for businesses that are willing to take on a student. A lot of the work is virtual, obviously. And you only have to pay 75% of minimum wage. So the business or, the, and this is good for nonprofits as well. Um, they only have to pay 75% of the minimum wage and um, the school will, through their, their program will cover the rest. Um, so these are just small things. Actually, Nancy's laughing because it was in your newsletter and I followed up. So back to Nancy's newsletter, right? So I read it there and I followed up with the person that, that is doing the program. So just an example of staying in touch with us. And if there's something that we can come up with, we're, we're gonna share it and we're gonna find a way to share it with you. 
Yeah, I, I would echo that too, that, um, you know, we're all being made aware of different programs at different times. I send out a weekly um, email with all of our classes, but I also try to stay on top of any funding, any new funding or loan opportunities for businesses. So um, as Maria said, we're all trying to work together. We're not in competition. We just want to help. Um, so don't, you can sign up for, you know, newsletters or, or emails from various different organizations and you might get bits and pieces from each one because we're all you know really trying to keep up on the latest especially on the COVID stuff there's there are new things being announced all the time so um, stay informed is 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 the the word to the and I was just thinking a lot of you have to subscribe to my newsletter on your website or through your email. So what I'll do too in the follow up email is I'll include that link with each organization if you have one just so you can easily just click them because I know, you know, I get your newsletters and they're very helpful and I think, um, you know, a lot of unfortunately obviously don't know all, you know, the workshops that are available for you for free. So uh, I will make sure I include that. Um, yeah, go ahead. I just want to go back to Marianne's question. I just I didn't want to skim by that. Um, you asked if there was more idle money available. Without knowing your personal situation, um, if you didn't get enough um, on the idle loan, you can um, ask um, for an increase up to the 150,000 or six months working capital. So if you didn't receive enough on the original, you can apply, um, for more like up to six months working capital or the 150,000. I don't know your situation, so I don't know if that's helpful or not. Thank you. Thank you. And please feel free, Marion, to reach out to um, Nancy. I'm sure she'd be more than happy to help you. So any last questions or parting words from any of our panelists? I know this is, um, I appreciate everyone taking the time out of their morning to, to do this, um, but you know, if you ever need anything, please reach out to me. Um, I'm here, like I said, to make the connections, but this is a great group of uh, folks here as we move forward in the new year. Um, personally, I would just recommend that you just send an email introducing yourself and your business and, you know, they'll be able to make the right connections on, on where you need the most help. So um, with that being said, anybody want to say any last words or are we good? Uh, thank you, Aaron. Thank you. Well, thank you, everyone. And I will, pro as I promised, I'll send a follow-up email um, either, you know, later on today or tomorrow or Monday, but I will make sure I get this information to you. Thank you, everyone. Thanks. And have a wonderful day and enjoy the snow. <laughs> well, everyone. everyone. Stay safe. <laughs>